Okay, we've been working on this tram action here. Okay, this is a metric dial test indicator, and I am one, one, it is rated at 0 0.01, so I'm 0 0.01 minus 0. Yeah, we go around the other side. And I am also at zero. How did we achieve that? We loosened up the T-nuts in the adapter plate, and we used the worm drive here to move the head, tilt the head left and right. So, you know, I'm, I don't know if people just don't watch the whole video or what, but nobody thinks that my worm drive works. Yes, I can loosen up the T-nuts, and I can turn this thing to my heart's content. I can go, you know, 90 degrees. Using, you know, using this worm drive. Because I installed the gear in my adapter plate. Oh, it's actually installed to the RAM. But... I definitely facilitated that. Okay, now the next adjustment is going to be the um, front to back. Now, on bridge points that have the ability to nod, that isn't a problem. So, I'm going to get my get a baseline and find out how much it's off, if any, and uh, figure out how I'm going to uh, nod this thing. Because I don't have a, the, the South Bend uh, does not facilitate a nod movement. So, Imagine I would have to shim the adapter plate. Would be the only thing I can think of offhand. Let's hope that it's not off. And there will be no need for that nonsense. Although I know it's off a little bit. Of course, it can be off a quarter of this dial and only be a couple thousandths. Okay, the way the head is right now, I am um, at plus one here. And here I am at plus seven. So that's about three thousandths of an inch. I'm not going to chase that. Am I right? Am I wrong? Let's get the vice trim then now. I don't know how much you're able to see here. There's five clicks to the positive. zero okay that's about two or three fractions of a millimeter. I doubt if it is um, 
even a one thousandth of an inch. Let me see what my conversion daily says here. So I got point zero two half a thousandth. So I'm within half a thousandth on the on the tram on the on the vice. We're gonna be happy with that. Okay guys, that was wasn't as painful as I thought it might be. Um, I got the table trammed into my satisfaction. Now I'm sure it's not gonna I'm not gonna please everybody. You never are. And I don't even remember what my final figures were. I think left to right, my tilt, I had it right on, trammed in perfectly, and my nod was off um, point zero four millimeters, which was I think less than two thousand seven inch, I think. Uh, here's my little calculator here. So I'm going to millimeters. 0 0.04 so the knot is within two thousandths of an inch so I'm going to go with that um, the vice is trammed in within a half a thou I'm going to go with that as well so uh you know, watch me do it, critique me, tell me I did it all wrong. <laughs> I'm here to learn, but uh, I think I, uh, I think I got it. Now I want to talk about uh, oiling the ways on this machine. I bought a, uh, a couple of them actually. Let me grab one. And this is for the situation where where people have uh, Zerk fittings, you know, grease type fittings on their machines. And this is um, made for that issue called push and lube. If you Google that, um, the company will come up that sells these. I will uh, try to put it in the description. Um, a bit fiddly, but it does the job. It has a little plug in here that you know works in a vacuum, and um, so that works a bit fiddly. Um, I um, in the past had bought these bottles of a uh, Versa oil. It's a uh, Gear Shield Advanced Odorless All Purpose Synthetic Lubricant. Well, it doesn't matter what the bottle says because that's not what's in it. The point is, is this needle allows you to insert that into the Zerk fitting and inject oil um, directly into that passage. So, uh, quite straightforward, easy to do. Um, now with this thing, you can actually, you know, you can actually see your progress because the oil level, you know, obviously goes down. And it does pump it in there with some force. So maybe it gets to areas that, you know, that this system with the needle doesn't. So maybe a combination of both methods. But, you know... I, I hear over and over again how you know it is, how important it is to keep those surfaces uh, lubed up. Once again, I want to thank uh, my other brother Daryl um, for lending me this device to uh, 
do my tramming. And uh, I am, um, I don't think he intended me to send it back to him, but I'm actually going to send this back and he might be able to um, loan it to somebody else. In the cow, so that's a that's not a, that's not a shop made unit. That's a that's made by Indicow. You can see that or not. Yeah, it's got the old made in USA and a patent pending product uh, model number, I imagine. So yeah. Daryl, I'm going to send that back to you, brother. Maybe someone else you can, uh, you can bless their lives. It is a handy piece of kit, I'll tell you that. Maybe I won't send it back to you. <laughs> if my greedy nature come out, I do want to get a, um, a standard or an American... Um, test indicator. I have some, but they're either missing their crystals or you know, they've been tumbled around in somebody's toolbox for years. And it shouldn't be much to get, you know, a decent Shars test indicator for 25 bucks or something. You, you never. Okay, guys, I, I, I do want to go over it one more time because I don't know if I'm, if, if, if maybe I'm, me and, a, me and these people are talking about two different things, but the way my milling machine is right now with the existing marriage plate, adapter plate, I am able to loosen up the T-nuts, put a wrench on the worm drive, and tilt the head to any, to any position I want. And then I can lock it there. So, the reason I'm making a new one with Dozer's suggestion because it's so God, <clears throat> because it's a much better way to do it, much less fiddly, let's say. Um, it's just a cool idea. Okay. God, I, you know, I'm still going to get. <laughs> I also got, and God bless the people who send me these comments, I appreciate it, but sometimes I'm being told I need a specific type piece of equipment to, to do something that I've already done without that piece of equipment. But there's many ways to skin a cat. Well, not a cat, I guess. <laughs> Let's say uh, something maybe not so domestic. <laughs> Let's say uh, rabbits are too cute. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything that won't be offensive. Offensive. There's many ways to skin a snake. No, that's not true. They just skin one way. Okay, guys, <laughs> like and subscribe, tell a buddy, bring a friend. We'll see you next time.